Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to take a closer look at what we call the sigma bonds. Again, we're trying to understand the bonding theory between atoms, and so there's two different kinds of bonds. One of them is called the sigma bond. We're going to take a look at the pi bond later in a different video. But here, what does that mean? What does a sigma bond mean? Where did that term come from? Well, it turns out that a lot of the bonding occurs when there's a sharing of valence electrons. Whenever the two atoms exist that have at least one orbital with only one electron in them. And so if you have one atom with just one atom in the, in, uh, one electron in the uh, orbital, have another atom with just one electron in the orbital, those orbitals can overlap. The electrons can then be in phase, sharing a region between the two nuclei, therefore setting up a negative region, a negatively charged region, attracting the two positive nuclei of the atoms. So in this case, we could have atoms that have two s orbitals, and in each s orbital there will be just one electron, so when they come together, each will then share that one electron to form a, a valence bond like that. Of course, it's not necessarily a, a total a valence, um, it's not totally uh, a sharing mechanism. Sometimes there's some ionic properties involved, but we're going to ignore those for now. So we have a valence bond right here with the two electrons being shared in a region where there's the highest probability of existence for those two electrons. Again, when they exist in that region and they're in phase, you can set them up in such a way that they attract the two nuclei, bringing the bond together. So in this case, we call that a sigma SS bond because it's two S orbitals joining together, overlapping the region, and creating that region where the two electrons can exist. We can have the same kind of situation when we have two P orbitals, the, P, the two P orbitals of the two atoms. And again, for simplicity, I just drew one P orbital for each atom, knowing, of course, they actually have three. But let's ignore the other two. And let's say that each of those two p orbitals only have one electron in them. So when they come together and overlap, they form a region where the two electrons can exist uh, as the highest probability region. And in that, in that particular high probability region, you have a negatively charged region. Therefore, again, pulling the two uh, nuclei, the two positive nuclei together, forming a bond. And so that's called the sigma pp bond because that was formed by two p orbitals. And, as you probably guessed, you can have a bond between an s orbital and a p orbital. Now, something does happen there, and we'll get into that a little bit later. We have a hybridization process taking place, but from the basic concept, we can say that we have an atom that has one s orbital with a single electron in its valence band. We have another atom that has at least one p orbital with just one electron in its valence band. When they come together, they do share those two electrons forming again a region between them where the two electrons can exist in phase, forming that negatively charged region, bringing the two positive nuclei close together. In that case, we call it a sigma sp bond because it was formed between an s orbital from one atom and a p orbital from the other atom. So this is what we call the valence sharing concept between two orbitals with just one electron in them, and so we call it the sigma bond. And in, the, in a future video, we'll take a look at what we call pi bonding, where we have a different kind of arrangement. See you in just a moment.